service. Service to the United States, service to the community, service to the family, and service to friends. Everyone has their own reasons for joining the military or the first responders. We understand that we are setting ourselves apart and doing the things that nobody will truly understand, which I feel is as it should be. With my unit personally, 2-4, I learned on the first day that everyone there was on the same page as me. They were all more worried about keeping the people at home away from the horrors and the things that we saw, keeping them pure in a sense. I'm sure that all of you active duty and veterans understand what I'm talking about. We all know the hardships that are bound our way, but the need to defend and protect the USA and everyone in it is worth it all. In the infantry, we know that if war breaks out, we'll be the first ones in, the first to attack, the first to take casualties, but that didn't stop anyone from choosing the path that they did. I think we've all come to terms with that, and the idea of going out heroically is our dreams as crazy as that sounds. That doesn't make losing anyone any easier. It is those that have fallen before us making the ultimate sacrifice that we are all able to stand here today. Men or women, young or old, they are all the same. They laid the foundation for everyone and everything you see before us. It's not only today that we remember them, but every day. Remember their pride, the gratitude, the love for family and country, the selflessness and the courage that each and every single one of them possessed. Though we may not know the same hero, we still owe it to each and every single one of them just the same. We owe it to them to call this the land of the free. The men and women before us didn't do it for the spotlight or for the fame. They did what they did for each other, for those standing beside them, fighting along with them, and for those standing behind them, unaware of the sacrifices that were being made, but not you. Each of you carries your memories with you. They live through each and every single one of you through the stories that you tell of them. So share their stories. Share your tears with those who understand what it's like to lose someone in the service, but also the pride in knowing that they made the call to duty and held us all above themselves. Without their sacrifice, we wouldn't be here. And for that, I will be forever thankful, as I'm sure you can all say the same thing. But I can't help it. I can't help but be greedy and wish that they were here with us today. They were here to tell the stories for themselves. They'd be able to come over for dinner, meeting their grandkids, their nieces, their nephews. I often ask myself, what would they have wanted? They did the job knowing what could come, the dangers that were on their way. A son or a daughter, a mom or a father, an uncle or an aunt, when the call came, they'd answer it. Take pride in the sacrifices that they made and wear it proud on your chest. I like to share a short cadence from the Marine Corps. It goes, Mama, Mama, can't you see what the Corps has done for me? Put me in a barber's chair, snip, snap, and I had no hair. And if I died in a combat zone, you box me up and you ship me home. You put me in a set of dress blues. You, sh you shine my shoes and comb my hair. You pin my medals upon my chest and you tell my mama that I did my best. And mama, mama, don't you cry because the Marine Corps motto is do or die. I think that it speaks for itself. We like to say acknowledge the fact of death and want nothing more than for our families to keep on living. <laughs> Sorry. For the families to keep on living and to remember them, to remember the fallen and never forget them. And to God, I pray that all of you continue to carry their names and their stories, the good and the bad and everything in between. The fallen we know look down on us, guarding the streets up above and looking down at you with pride and honor that is unimaginable to us. There is a cost to our freedom, which has been paid and will continue to be paid for as long as there are people who are willing to threaten our freedom. It is up to us 
It is up to you to honor them. God bless all of you and God bless the United States of America. Peace of the fallen. Thank you. Welcome back, Private First Class Talay Totolo, U.S. Marine Corps, Semper Fi. The Marines are proud of you. Thank you. And we're proud of you. I am indeed privileged to be a small part of this wonderful annual celebration in Saratoga. I've been here many times. It's one of my favorite days as honoring veterans is a very meaningful experience and holds very salient lessons for our young people in Saratoga. We have the music provided by the young people, the speaker from the high school, the speaker from the Marine Corps, and the scouts and others who place flags on the veterans' graves. 1,234 veterans, wonderful. And we're going to honor them again for the first time at Rees Across America at Madronia Cemetery on the 14th of December. Lisa, could you stand, please? Lisa Oakley is spearheading that. It's a wonderful program in which we'll put Rees on all the veterans' uh, headstones. And so if you want to contribute, because they have to raise a lot of money for those Rees, see Lisa Oakley. Thank you, Lisa. My father served in Burma in World War II, and I went to Vietnam in the legacy that I inherited from him. When I arrived in Vietnam, I received a letter from my great uncle, who had raised my dad, reminding me that dad had served in combat, and that I was continuing that tradition. We had never heard of Saratoga, but it's been my hometown for over 30 years, and is yours, so let's focus on Saratoga, and who we are honoring today. Military and civilian heroes in our midst, right here in Madronia Cemetery. As Mohit noted earlier, Memorial Day, or Decoration Day as it was once known, got its start in the Civil War time frame, both North and South, with Union soldiers and Confederate soldiers being honored. Our cemetery here has as a resident Mary Brown, the second wife of John Brown, who led the anti-slavery raid on Harper's Ferry just prior to the Civil War. Her husband and two of his children were either killed or subsequently executed in 1859 and 1860. But her grandson, James Brown Fablinger, is also buried here as he served in World War I and World War II. Civil War veterans buried here include Henry Hogg of the 19th Kentucky Infantry and John Calvin Fitz of the 49th Indiana Infantry. So a lot of older history here. In addition to Mary Brown's grandson, other World War veterans buried here include William Appleby, who was a seaman in the Navy, and First Sergeant Horace Stanford of the 18th Field Artillery, and a woman, Augusta B. Caddo, who served <coughs> with the Army Nurse Corps. Also buried here, a gentleman whom I take to be her husband, Raymond Caddo, who was a sergeant first class in the medical department. Their son, Richard Caddo, served in World War II and is buried in Korea. So we have at least four Caddos buried here who served in the military, veterans of three of America's wars starting with World War I. Sadly, that war, which was called the war to end all wars at the time, did not. A great cautionary tale was released in a movie last year, 2018, the centennial of World War I. A documentary entitled, They Shall Not Grow Old, which I recommend for your review. Using state-of-the-art technology and material from the BBC and the Imperial War Museum in London, 
Filmmaker Peter Jackson allows the story of World War I to be told by the men who were there. It, it's footage that was filmed during World War I, colorized, slowed down. With a 100% rating on Rotten Tomatoes, you know it's a great movie. And as a teacher, I highly recommend it, with a caution for the young viewers, but I recommend it to the young people. If you want to see what war is like and how awful it is, watch They Shall Not Grow Old. It's available on the internet. World War II involved the entire country. 16 million Americans served, so it's no wonder that we have so many World War II veterans from the greatest generation buried here. Just to mention a few, Corporal Frank Joseph Shufezi died at the age of 91, and he wanted it noted on his headstone that he'd been a corporal in the Marine Corps during World War II. There are many, many similar examples here. Joseph Mosier, Private First Class, U.S. Army, World War II, and Tech 5 John McCarty, who won the Bronze Star and Purple Heart with the 17th Airborne Division. We now view World War II as the good war, and there are no good wars, but we call it that. It was fought by the greatest generation, and there are a lot of World War II vets here. The Army Air Forces have many of the more colorful headstones from World War II here. Up on this hill, Dr. Frederick Brandau flew B-17s and was awarded the DFC, Distinguished Flying Cross. There's a large graphic of a B-17 and his decoration on the back of the headstone. It's a B-17 you've seen flying around here all this week. And the noise that its four unmuffled engines make is the sound of freedom. <laughs> Next to him, Lieutenant John Paul Lampling, a B-24 pilot with the 90th Bomber Group. And nearby, Lieutenant Charles Neff, who flew 35 combat missions, including two on D-Day, 6 June 1944, when the Allies invaded France. As a navigator, Lieutenant Lampling once flew a plane back to England after both the pilot and the co-pilot had been wounded. And he's also credited with shooting down a German rocket fighter, a rarely known Messerschmitt. Wounded, he returned to the U.S. on the Queen Elizabeth, which had been converted from luxury liner into a hospital ship. And there are also the women of World War II. Mary Elizabeth Braden served in the Navy. Maxine Odom served in the Army, and Renna Muscat and her husband William both served in the Navy, which reminds me that, and this is for my wife Susan, who comes from a Navy family, we have two admirals buried here. Thomas Inglis, who was also one of the founders of Monte Sereno, and Admiral Leroy Isaacson. And there are many, many more World War II veterans. Which leads us to Korea, the Forgotten War. Charles Cecil Long served in World War II in Korea, as did Captain John Bartlett of the U.S. Navy. First Lieutenant Frederick Hawks flew saber jets in Korea, as did our own Bob Keyboard, who's here in the audience. Bob, could you stand, please? We have another Korean War veteran in the second row. Thank you so much, sir. Also serving in Korea and buried here, Private First Class Dmitry Shabanin. Vietnam. The U.S. sent three million soldiers, sailors, <coughs> airmen, Coast Guardsmen to Vietnam. So it's no surprise that we have a number of Vietnam veterans here and many more to come, including yours truly. Two soldiers killed in Vietnam who are buried here include Specialist Fourth Class Don Roussein, killed by small arms fire after serving two months in Vietnam, and Sergeant Richard Allen Thomas, Special Forces, who posthumously received the Bronze Star and two Purple Hearts for actions in Cambodia. Both soldiers' names appear here and on the Vietnam Veterans Memorial in D.C., which includes the names of all 58,000 soldiers who were killed in Vietnam. It was my privilege to have served two tours in Vietnam, and I take students from De Anza there often to learn from our experience. The two countries are now great friends. It is sad that it took a war to bring us together, 
particularly since Ho Chi Minh had been asking for our help since 1919 to rid his country of the French. In the early 50s, he also sent eight letters to President Truman asking for our help. None were even responded to. Other Vietnam veterans buried in the cemetery whom we honor today include Lieutenant William Musser from the Navy, whose parents both served in World War II, and David Allen Ritter. There will be, as I have noted, many more, as well as survivors of Iraq and Afghanistan. While Memorial Day was designed to honor veterans, I want to conclude by honoring two civilians, one of whom was killed on the first day of the global war on terror, 11 September 2001, and one of whom lost his life because of Vietnam. The first is Mark Bingham, who was one of the heroes of Flight 93, which crashed in Pennsylvania rather than being crashed into the U.S. Capitol or the White House. A graduate of Los Gatos High School in UC Berkeley, Mark was six foot four, a rugby player who planned and led the overtaking of the cockpit on the plane, which had been occupied and was being flown by terrorists. I encourage you to read the details on Wikipedia. You can even listen to Mark's last phone call from the plane. We salute you, a civilian, Mark Bingham. The final hero we will honor today is a name known to most of you, but you may not know why Kevin Moran Park was named in his honor. Kevin Moran of Saratoga was a college student at the University of California at Santa Barbara. In early 1970, the Isla Vista riots broke out in a series of UCSB student protests against the Vietnam War, which resulted in much destruction to Isla Vista and fights between the students and the first responders. In April, the president of the UCSB student body asked some moderate students to go down to put out fires set by radical students who were protesting the war by torching a Taco Bell in the Bank of America. Kevin was one of a group of volunteers who put out the fire in the Taco Bell and then moved to put out the arson fire at the bank. In the meantime, the Santa Barbara police were throwing tear gas to disperse the crowd. Kevin was killed by a police bullet that was ultimately ruled as an accident. But like Matt, Matt Bingham, he had volunteered to do a heroic action and lost his life in the process because of Vietnam. So on this Memorial Day 2019, and in this place, the Madronia Cemetery of Saratoga, we remember and memorialize our heroes of past conflicts, as well as the citizenry who benefited by the actions of our soldiers, sailors, Coast Guard, Marines, and airmen, and two civilians, Matt Bingham and Kevin Moran. Thank you. Makeup's on. <laughs> Next, we have the band and the choir performing a 